Before we start, we need to review two basic facts about the stable homotopy category, namely that it is enriched both in abelian groups and graded abelian groups. The idea behind it being enriched in abelian groups is that the set of morphisms in a homotopy category from an object to an image of a loop functor naturally carries a group structure. The crucial observation is then that um, suspension and looping are inverses to each other in the stable homotopy category. And so y is equivalently the loop of the suspension of y, i.e. something in the image of the loop functor. So we have ab enrichment, abelian group enrichment. The grading is kind of natural. Um, the extension to grading over uh, enrichment over graded abelian groups is kind of a natural extension as its nth degree um, is the hom from the n-fold suspension of x to y. Now we have some important definitions. To begin with, a spectrum x is E acyclic if E smash x is zero. Okay, so the way I'm thinking about this is even though x may not be zero in general, it is zero from the perspective of E. So like where E is standing, it can't see x. Sorry if that wasn't a helpful analogy, that's just how I'm trying to digest the definition. Really, this is kind of a philosoph kind of the philosophical idea behind localization in general, I believe. It's to choose a specific position or place to stand and try to view the category or whatever from that perspective. Anyways, moving on, we come to the definition of an E equivalence. So a morphism f from x to y of spectra is an E equivalence if the induced map from E smash x to E smash y is an isomorphism. Again, this is kind of like um, saying that if f is an isomorphism, kind of like saying that f is an isomorphism from the perspective of E. Finally, a spectrum x is E local if the following two equivalent conditions hold. We will actually prove that they are equivalent in a second. The first condition is that for every E equivalence f, this induced map on the graded homs is an isomorphism. So it's a map from the nth hom of codomain of f and x to the nth hom of the domain of f and x. By the way, we started from the codomain because of contravariance. But okay, at first glance I was thinking to myself that this was similar to the second condition. But on reading it much closer, I found that this definition is much stronger. f need not have a domain or codomain equal to x. So what we're saying is something along the lines of, if two things are isomorphic from the perspective of E, the spectrum X is E local if F induces an isomorphism through X, in the sense made precise in the definition. I guess what I'm trying to get at is, first of all, that of course E itself is E local. So the terminology of local maybe suggests the intuition that X is quote unquote close to E. Things from the perspective of X look really similar to things from the perspective of E. The second equivalent condition is that every morphism from y to x out of an E acyclic spectrum y is zero in the stable homotopy category. This really furthers our intuition. Y being E acyclic means that we can't see it from the perspective of E. So E is also obscured from the perspective of y. This condition says that x is also obscured from the perspective of y. At least when we are standing at E, x seems close enough that we can't see any maps from y to x. For instance, because our perspective of y is so obscured. It's like when we stand at E, there's a wall blocking our view of y. And x is close to where we're standing such that the line from y to x is, uh, is obstructed by that same wall. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to explain my intuition in case that helps anyone. The point is that E acyclic things are obscured from the perspective of E, E equivalent morphisms are seen as isomorphisms from the perspective of E, and E local things are quote unquote close to E in terms of perspective. Um, in terms of the perspectives from X and E are quite similar. So let's prove that the two statements in part three are indeed equivalent. One direction is relatively straightforward. Assume that um, the first statement, that for every E equivalence F, that Fx bullet is an isomorphism. Now let y be a e acyclic. This means by definition basically that the unique map from zero to y is an e equivalence. Well, then by assumption yx bullet is isomorphic to zero x bullet, which uh, is zero in each dimension. 
Well, then y x bullet is zero. So taking, for instance, the zero dimension, we see that every morphism from y to x is trivial. So let's see the other direction. Suppose every map out of an E acyclic spectrum y is zero in the stable homotopy category. Really, this is um, the more remarkable result. In other words, in order for we want to show that in order for a um, fx bar to be an isomorphism for all E equivalences f, then it is enough to show that fx bar is an isomorphism for all E equivalents just of the form 0 to y. This is because each E equivalence of the form 0 to y corresponds to an E acyclic spectrum y. So um, let's get down to the proof. Let f from a to b be a morphism of spectra since the stable homotopy category is triangulated, there exists a distinguished triangle with f as its first morphism. In particular, this distinguished triangle is a to b to b a to shift a, where b a is, in this case, the homotopy cofiber. Okay, let me just write this kind of suggestively as um, a commuting dry diagram. We're not saying much more here than I just described, but with the added lemma that if A, B, C, shift A is a distinguished triangle, then so is inverse shift C, A, B, C. That's um, what's going on in the bottom here. So yeah, the point of writing um, like this is that both the top and bottom are cofiber sequences. The bottom is by construction and the top is and zero is the cofiber of the identity. So here comes the really important property of the stable homotopy category. It's the fact that applying a graded abelian group functor, e.g. something um, comma x bullet, turns cofiber sequences into um, long exact sequences. So applying that here gives us this diagram, where the arrows are flipped because of contravariance. Now I want you to see something. If the fourth, fourth vertical morphism from BAX bullet to zero is an isomorphism, well, then the first vertical morphism is also an isomorphism. The second and last vertical morphisms are by construction isomorphisms. So by the five lemma, the middle um, vertical morphism must also be an isomorphism. Well, notice that um, morphism is the thing we are trying to say something about. In other words, we want to show that if f is an E equivalence, then fx bullet is an isomorphism. Well, by what we just said, if we can show that f being an E equivalence implies bax bullet to zero is an isomorphism, i.e. that ba is E acyclic, then we will have our result. Okay, so we want to show that if f is an E equivalence, then ba is E acyclic. Well, since the stable homotopy category is tensor triangulated, the smash product with E preserves homotopy cofiber sequences. So this is a homotopy cofiber sequence as well. We are assuming that F is an E equivalent, so now the so now that the first morphism, E smash F is an isomorphism. But again, if that is the case, then that implies E smash B A is zero, i.e. that B A is E A cyclic as desired. So what I just said about this implying that E smash BA is zero. We can see this a little more explicitly. It follows from our earlier remark that if the first map is the identity, then in the homotopy cofiber sequence, the cofiber is zero. The three vertical morphisms are then isomorphisms, so the third is as well. So with definition 2.1 in hand, we are finally ready to define the following. Given two spectra E and X in the stable homotopy category, the E localization of X is a pair of information. Firstly, an e, a, an e local spectrum, LEX, and secondly, an E equivalence from X to LEX. So as the name would suggest, what we're doing intuitively is making X into an E local spectrum. To me, this is highly suggestive of omega spectrification of sequential or symmetric spectra. Like in that case, we found out that for any spectra, we could construct an omega spectrum that was stably equivalent to the original. This reminds me a lot of that. Next time, furthering this similarity, we will show that E localizations always exist.